Hi, my name is Tim Wynn, and I'm on Film Music Media All Access to talk about my music and Freaks. Tim, thank you so much for uh, joining me again and having yeah. me at your studio. It's so great to talk again. Thanks, Kai. Good to see you, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we did an interview a few years ago. Um, it's been a few years, so let's kind of just start fresh a little bit and kind of revisit your um, kind of your origin story, to, to uh, so to speak. Um, talk about kind of your early memories of uh, childhood and when music started seeping in and kind of becoming more than just a an interest or just a hobby well i think i mean i always was interested interested in music i'm the youngest of uh two other uh, siblings so i you know they would play their music they liked elo james taylor <laughs> a bunch of different things like that so I, music was always something that was playing in my household um and this was back before smartphones and things like that so uh to really keep my mind busy and occupied I always was thinking about music and just in my in my head just I had all this free time between you know football basketball whatever it was so music yeah. was something that like kind of was my security blanket to all right I gotta wait a half an hour to you know get picked up for my dad or something like that um, so I started writing music in my head to just kind of like instead of you know people doodle uh, on you know pieces of paper or something like that. Yeah. What I what I did was just kind of write music and and come up with tunes and, and and things like that. So that was I remember it fondly, just riding bikes and just singing songs mm -hmm. that I would you know come up with in my mind. And so uh, I knew music was going to you know play a, an important role in my life. Was a uh, when did were you aware of like film music and TV music? Was that a, that like... that came a little bit more of a acquired taste? I mean, I think. I, I was always aware of it. Uh, yeah. I, you know, from you know Star Wars and and you know everything. I was always interested in it, but I don't. I didn't think I quite understood it. And I still, you know, I don't think the general public and as a whole really <laughs> still understands it. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, when they think, oh, you did the soundtrack for Freaks, for instance. Yeah. Okay. You know, they are looking for songs, and it's like, no, it's <laughs> there's not any songs on it. Even though uh, I think the genesis of my music career was being a songwriter. Right. Uh, but I've just kind of you know changed changed that sort of path a little bit but um, I think as in high school I think I started becoming more aware of it where um, you know I was introduced to some other composers that had sort of a filmic uh, you know sort of bent to it like uh, Gustav Holtz, uh, oh, yeah. DBC, um, Ravel and you know they, they had this way of painting musical you know portraits and the visual aspects of of what they came up with was really important to me. So I think it was a natural sort of like, okay, where's the next, you know, where, where does that creative energy take, me? Mm, you know, yeah. um, you know, how, how do I do the same sort of thing, you know, nowadays, you know, I, I wasn't really interested in writing operas or, or things like that, but, but something about the visuals and music together is, is was really important to me. Right. Yeah. And so what was like that seminal moment where you're like, this is going to be my career. This is going to be what I'm going to do for a living. Uh, <laughs> you know, it feels like more like a, I don't know if there was like that eureka moment. Yeah. I, mean, I think I had it uh, a eureka moment maybe when I was younger. Right. Um, probably going into high school before high school. I think probably in the uh, eighth grade, seventh grade, where I really said I'm going to do music. Now at that point, it was more of a singer songwriter type thing. I'm going to write songs. I'm do music. But I was like, I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to quit football. I you know I was into sports heavily. I'm going to jump every you know stop everything mm. and then just move into music full time um so that kind of happened early the the transition for you know the film scoring stuff i think it was that i really understood that it was going to be my career was probably my senior year of usc mm. um it was the first meeting of you um i should go back so, so you go to undergrad at usc for music so right. i was there going to you know regular you know, being a composer, just like, you know, uh, you know, pretty serious type of composer. So in your senior year, they changed it now to where it's only postgraduate. Mm. But in the year that I was there with Chris Leonard's, um, we, uh, we had that, we took that uh, part of the course also in the senior year. So the first meeting that Buddy Baker came along with, uh, you know, I think Chris Young was there, a couple of the other uh, faculty were there. Yeah. When they came in and kind of told us what was gonna you know happen in our senior year it was it was absolutely 100 percent. i'm like yes this is exactly what i want to do right. um i didn't want to be uh a, I, I wasn't interested in being a teacher or you know or a classical composer in that sort right. of way 
Um, I really wanted to, even though now I'm looking to write, you know, more symphonies and, and things like that. And, and th I have plans for that in the future, but I don't have time to do it, but that's a, that's a, that's a, a separate sort of thing like that. But it yeah. was something about the way um, they made you feel, they made you uh, just feel welcomed. And, and as that year progressed, when I met Elmer Bernstein, um, you know, every, everybody there was like, yes, th this is the feedback that I want. This is, right. the, this is the sort of like, the, the people that I want to learn, I want to learn to be like Elmer Bernstein. How do I do that? Right, right. Yeah. Um, so those in those early years, um, as a young composer, are you kind of like thinking about, you know, you just mentioned like, oh, I want to, how do I be Elmer Bernstein? But are you also thinking about your own identity as a composer? Like, what is my sound? What is, is that something that goes through a mind of a young composer? Or are you just kind of focused on just like, I don't know, just absorbing everything you can? Or you're not, they're not even part of your consciousness? Well, I mean, I think, I think it's a part of your consciousness in so much as, like what music turns turns you on, okay? So everyone is a blend, I think, of different composers throughout mm -hmm. time. I mean, nobody, you know, someone somewhere down the road wrote the the first chord, and then you know everyone builds on each other's back. So right. for me, um, I saw myself as like uh, a mix between sort of like James Newton Howard and Jerry Goldsmith. Their music spoke to me, so writing in sort of the mixed meters, I really liked. Um, I'm half Irish, so I used to always like to write in six eight, you know, kind of like th that sort of stuff. So James and Howard writes in that quite often. So I felt like that was like a blend of like you know, JBC was a big you know uh, sort of thing, like uh, sort of influence on my life. So yeah. I, I think all of those different influences kind of makes you, you know, what yeah, you yeah. are, you know, I, I wouldn't call myself like a John Williams disciple. Uh, but there are a lot of people that are, of course, he's amazing, you know, yeah, um, yeah. not a bad way to go. But it was <laughs> I, I, I saw myself more, you know, kind of, I guess, I guess, Goldsmith, like, not as heavy as Goldsmith. But <laughs> yeah. but I mean, he, you know, he's a genius. So if I can be one tenth of <laughs> Uh, of Goldsmith, then, then I've done my part. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned, of course, Chris, Chris Leonard's, yeah. um, and you two have built this amazing uh, world here with Sonic yeah. Fuel Studios. Yeah. Uh, so you guys go way back. Is that, did you meet in school? Is that what you guys met? We did. It was the first uh, first day of my sophomore year, and that's when you start taking your, your composition classes. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's a very small class. It was, you know, there was three of us at the time. And so one of them was Chris and, and we immediately hit it off and we saw the world kind of in the same way. And, and, you know, we were serious about music, but we're also there at USC to have a good time. And so you yeah. know, we ended up joining a fraternity together. And I mean, it was just I mean, I don't want to say love at first sight. That makes it sound a little bit strange, but I mean, well, I think know, it's a bit of a marriage at this point. It, it, no, it is, and in many ways, it, it has been more permanent. And uh, I, I can't be more thankful. The guy's he's got a heart of gold, and he teaches me uh, a lot of a lot of good, you know, important lessons. And 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 it's somebody that I can talk to, um, you know, much like a brother. That like, hey, what do you think about this piece of music? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And uh, so, it, I, I think. After graduation, it was even more important when we how how we kind of started to get together mm -hmm. um, as in a studio space. Is you know he was working on his first few features and I was working on my first few features, and it's such a lonely experience yeah. to like sit in front of this computer all day. And I I remember like going to the store to just you know buy soda or something like that and wanting to talk to the cashier just so I could like talk to somebody, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, it's different nowadays because, yeah. you know, it's, it's much more, it, it, it's easy to kind of reach out and things like that. But, um, it just, it felt kind of lonely. And, and, and so that's how we ended up kind of like, Hey, you want to get a studio space together? Let's, let's get together and, and, and kind of enjoy ourselves. Cause you know, I mean, pinch, pinch me. I'm, I get to, you know, write music for a living. I'm really happy. I'm really lucky. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, it's like, how do we have a good time at, and, and also, you know, get our jobs done. So um, that's kind of how it sort of like, that's how the genesis of like Sonic Fuel, our studio is uh, stu get, get, making studio space and, and doing all sorts of stuff. Like that. Right. So, I mean, yeah, this is not, it's, it's not, we're not all under one brand. It's just kind of composers all on their individual paths, kind of just collectively working next to each other. Exactly. Kind of have with support for each other almost a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it is, it's, it's support. I mean, we yeah. get together, we talk about sample libraries, we, you know, complain about our directors, <laughs> you know, wh whatever that hap happens to be, yeah. we talk about whiskey, talk about life. And 
um, you know, try to support each other a little bit. I mean, it, it is a tough business in the sense that it, you are competing against other people, but right. you know yeah. what? I think, I think in time, uh, when I was in my twenties, I think that I, every job that I didn't get, I felt like it was a huge missed opportunity mm. where now I'm, it's, it's kind of almost like dating where it's like, yeah. you, you know, you put your lure, lure out there, you're going to catch, you know, 10 fish or hopefully catch 10 fish or, and then, um, or you're going to get none, but you're going to, it's all going to work itself out is what is kind of where I'm going with that. And, right. And, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and I don't get so upset that, uh, that, oh, you know, some other composer got a big job yeah. or, you know, I missed out on that. It's, it's easy come, easy go, and, and you, you'll get the next one. And, and so far in my career, it's happened that way. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you're talking about that, like you, composers have to deal with rejection, have to deal yeah. as part of, part of the course. And yeah. does that, does that take getting used to like, oh yeah, like that hurt, that it sting like those it, first few rejections it, or it, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it stings. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it's easy to be pragmatic about it and say, oh yeah, easy come, easy go. Yeah. yeah. There are some times that you're like, you're pretty upset about it, but. I don't know. I think I think you kind of have to look outside your bubble a little mm -hmm. bit and realize that there are a lot of people dealing with a lot of struggles that maybe, you know, you missing out on this project isn't yeah. isn't the end of the world. I mean, I think uh uh my dog still loves me. My family still loves <laughs> me. Uh you know, it, it's it's not so bad and and, and you have fans. We all love you. Yeah. <laughs> we you. love your music. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And and it's, you know, that that's hard. I think that's the hard part that yeah. it, it, that um, you know, we have interns from time to time and, and young composers and Chris and I are always trying to help them out um, because people were very instrumental in our careers when we were uh, yeah. younger and, yeah. and generous with their time. And so I try to be as, as, as best as a mentor as possible. Um, and that's the thing we try to tell them is like, you're going to have to really get thick skin. This is not the business if you can't deal with rejection. Yeah. You know, you said it and it, and it's really, it's hard sometimes. And, and uh, but I have seen, I, have, I was on the stage at Todd A.O. when Elmer Bernstein got fired. The Elmer Bernstein <laughs> got fired, and here I am sitting right there watching it all happen. I mean, so there's going to be times that, like, people don't respond to my music. Yeah. And, and, and don't, you know, something happens that goes wrong. You can't fix all situations right. with your music. And, it, right. and you do the best you can, and you be the best person you can, and it's, it just it, it seems to work itself out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's easy to say, but it, I, know, I swear it, to God, it, yeah, when I'm in my zen say, moment, it's like... If there's someone at home just crying right now, yeah, like, no, it'll yeah. get better. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to say I didn't take a shot of whiskey to yeah. like, get to that zen moment, <laughs> but it was, uh, it's hard, but you make it through. I mean, I think, I think uh, and there's parallels like that, and um, I think Sting had a sort of, same sort of thing where I mean, the police didn't, uh, you know, break until he was, what, in his late twenties or early thirties after doing it for seven years and yeah. teaching and things like that. So it's, it's almost kind of like if you could make that hump of, of like eating, you know, you know, top ramen for three years and it, it'll, it, it comes, you know, yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. does, it, it'll come some way. And it doesn't have to necessarily be um, exactly what you think you want it to be. Right. So if you're open to, you know, other opportunities, there's a lot of things to do in music and, and, and sometimes being a composer isn't the only thing, and, and it's maybe not your best yeah. thing either. Um, but you know, there's there's just a million different paths to take, and and just don't be closed minded like this. I'm only going to be you know John Williams right. like part two, and that's it. You're going to have a hard time if you're if you're that person. But if you're yeah. open to a lot of different opportunities, then I think it, it makes it a lot easier to like follow different paths and 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 look back on it and say, oh my god. Thank God that I, I I did it differently than yeah. than this way. So for sure, yeah. I mean, it's a different world than what you know when John Williams started with with TV shows and and things like that. I mean, there's so many different you know media opportunities yeah. and you know YouTube and you know all, so many different things that you, you're able to um, to have your music be played. That it you, you can't be a better time to you know be a composer right now. So. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So some of your um, talk about getting some of those first jobs, like right. uh, those. Uh, you, do you score a lot of shorts before you kind of got into features? Is that kind of like the path, or did you uh, were you able to like? It was pretty quickly. I did a few uh, shorts, but it was mm -hmm. pretty quickly that I met uh, Paul DeFranco. That he was he was a music supervisor at, at Concord New Horizons, mm -hmm. and they're always looking for new talent or you know new sacrificial lambs. New blood, to, yeah, new blood. <laughs> <laughs> to kind of handle it, so I kind of jumped in right away with them and and did uh, a few features, three or four features with them, 
uh, that sort of spawned off where I, I started working with Alex Potsavas, who's a big music supervisor now. And we were working on, you know, small, you know, medium sized budget films on yeah, that. So yeah. it, I was pretty lucky with that um, getting going. And from there I started getting into commercials and it just kind of like sprung into different, yeah. into different sort of avenues. Well, a big chunk of your career has been video games, yeah. which uh, I'm a huge fan of, and I love your video game scores. I yeah, mean, from thank you. like Warhawk and, of course, Red Faction Guerrilla, and yeah. you also did the Simpsons game, uh, yeah. which was, I think, one of four composers. You had you and Chris and Jim Dooley. Was that like a more of like a? Well, <laughs> well, that was well, that was kind of funny. Where um, so me and Chris were taking over for two other composers. Right. I don't know if I should even say the names, but they're big names. <laughs> And um, so we were taking over and we were doing the full score. And then I, I can't remember why Hans and Jim Dooley got, they got brought in at the last minute, not to, do, we were doing all the in-game play and mm -hmm. there was something, there had something to do with the contract or whatever like that. But the yeah. Simpsons wanted a little bit of music from Hans and 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 then Jim ended up doing some as well. So, so they, it, we had nothing to do with each other. And so Chris and I went up to Skywalker Ranch and recorded our score. And then I think, Jim and Hans did a little bit of music after yeah. after those uh, that so uh, it all just they all kind of blended in you know with EA and right. and that was probably one of my most treasured experiences if I you know if I'm sitting on my deathbed <laughs> I mean hopefully I have a lot more experiences like it but I we got to go up to Skywalker Ranch and record for a week uh, you know with Chris and so I mean it was the most yeah. fun serene um, you know sort of music making artistic moment that I ever had in my life where you know really you know, it just was unreal. I mean, sitting in front of that orchestra, they have a great orchestra in San Francisco. They really do. Um, and it was just a, a moment I'll never forget because it was not like, um, you know, driving into Burbank every day or, yeah. or whatever where yeah. you have to, you know, work at, you know, any of the places like there. It was just like you kind of ride your bike into the studio and you're <laughs> relaxed and like, okay, what time are we on? And take the baton. Okay, downbeat. It was, it's not like, Normally, you know, it's very high stressed, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and I, I've never been calm or right. in my life, you know, conducting an orchestra and, uh, and creating music for it. So the Simpsons game was 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 one of a kind for sure. For that for that game, it must have been. Um, I mean, you have that iconic, of course, Danny Elfman theme, and then yeah. Alf's music from thirty plus years. It's yeah. like, how do you? I guess are you are you just trying to fit it into that world, or how do you put your own stamp on it? I guess is the question. Well, I don't know if you 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 you, you kind of blend uh, uh, a couple different things, and mm -hmm. and I mentioned Elmer Bernstein, and I was thinking about that because it was it was comedy, so yeah, it, I played. You know, Elmer always said you, you have to play it straight. You know, right. it, you know, Ghostbusters. It wasn't like all these little blimp, blimp, da -da -da -da, you know, I just watched all... Airplane last night with my wife. Yeah, know? so it's like that's it, the most straightforward. It's a straight thing, and you know, <laughs> let 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 the funny be funny, and uh, and so that's kind of how I, I did, and and I did um, some of the. Uh, you know, where the day the earth stands still sort of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, you know, Hermanesque and, and stuff. So it was, you know, a lot of just, you know, kind of just mocking and in that it's serious. It's yeah. funny. Right. So <laughs> there was, you know, there was just different parts, parts of it that I, you know, you could take and I did some land of chocolate and some, some of different things. So, you know, how, you know, Alf always did a great job of like, you know, kind of like making his music sound like, you know, kind of ev evoking yeah. different sort of things like that. So that's that's how it kind of really came together. That's was, awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I mentioned also Red Faction Guerrilla, which is I'm a huge Red Faction fan. Me and my brother grew up playing those games. Yeah. And I remember when it, it went up to like it was the first like open world of that franchise. Right. And honestly, what year was that? That was a while ago. I mean, open world games are now kind of the standard. Yeah. 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 But when you tackle that as a composer. I mean, is that difficult because you're you're working with your the developers who are still making this world I mean, you do you know how your music is going to be used in that world are you scoring stuff that you know how it all feels I'm a, I'm rambling now but how do you yeah, make yeah, it yeah. work in an open world game I guess Yeah no that's a good point <laughs> well I, I mean I think I think there's they they set a lot of different parameters on it so mm -hmm. you know when like this trigger happens it, it kind of uh you know think of like um um I'm trying to think of the game that was uh, uh, Fallout. Yeah. So, you know, there's just triggers on everything. So if you're just like walking willy-nilly around the desert, you're, you know, you're just on sort of the ambient tracks. And mm -hmm. then that, if, if you really listen to the music, like when the music changes, that means, oh crap, yeah, you're in trouble. Oh shit, this moment. Oh shit moment. And you're like, oh no, <laughs> something's happening. They're you know, stalking me. Like, yeah, that sort of thing like that. So that's usually what happens is it gets a trigger 
And um, I, mean, for, I told Ian on that when I interviewed. I'm like, yeah, those oh shit moments. But yeah, the like, yeah. Like, you're like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I may be a little bit more in tune to it, but yeah. I'm like, I'm very like those audio cues. They tell you a lot, and 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 you're like, oh man, something's stalking me now, yeah. and, and it certainly is. So that's how it kind of works in in gameplay. But for Red Faction Guerrilla, they hired me to write the main theme, and so that theme was used throughout um, of it, and then to do all the cinematics. Mm. And, and so, um, and so I got to go to Skywalker ranch for that as oh, well. Wow, yeah, yeah. And, and that was another great, uh, a great thing, uh, experience and, and, uh, you know, working with Volition and, it, you know, they're just, it was just a great, great experience. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, the darkness too was another great one. Yeah. Uh, that's more of a first person shooter. Yeah. Um, is that, uh, how would you compare that to like something like XCOM 2, which is like more strategy or something yeah. like that? Like how, because that's more of a linear, I guess closer to what a film might be with cutscenes and then kind of progression of path versus right. XCOM is more strategy. How would you compare a strategy versus first person shooter in terms of scoring? Well, that's a good question. Um, I mean, a lot of it, so the, the cutscenes type stuff, that's the same, yeah. I mean, in, in game movies. So I, I feel like that's what really kind of drew me to working in video games because I already done a bunch mm -hmm. of movies, so um, I think that's where originally I got the the call to do it because they, they liked how my my music kind of sound sounded like films and you know right film composer yeah. and so there <laughs> duh duh uh, it kind of works that way um, so for a first person shooter you're uh, you're you're kind of given more of, of a game plan of like how mm -hmm. how it's how it's going to be used and things like that I mean and every game tries to tackle like how how it works, um, you know, how many streams of audio they can have going, how many, I mean, it's every, every, everybody's always trying to figure it out and the audio usually gets the last allocated asset. So sometimes you're like, oh, we wanted to do this, this whole thing with all these stems and stuff like that. And they're like, yeah, we only have stereo to do. So, um, <laughs> you know, that's all the bandwidth that, that we have to get doing. Cause you know, videos is, is somewhat important video games as well. So, right. um, you know, I guess, I guess for the darkness, it was, I mean, it was it was pretty much like that. Um, we tried to use uh, stems in it so that you would hear the full score um, at the very beginning, and then the orchestra uh, would go. And then, if you took a long time, you know, getting your way through it slowly, the stems would kind of die out. Mm -hmm. So then you would get to the lowest level intensity. If you know, you knew that you weren't. You're like, oh wow, I'm. I just. It's like just the music is barely playing. It's mean like, yeah, you got to get your. You know, play better. You know, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're you're not doing a very good job if you only heard like the marimba or something yeah, like or a synth pad just going. It's like, dude, you got to get back. You you took a wrong turn somewhere. <laughs> get back on that. And then when you hear the full orchestra again, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in the right the place. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So you did mention earlier your love of sports, and you did get to score a Madden game. I did, yeah. Which was, I think, 2013. Madden was 2013? 2015. 2015? Yeah. It was the um, 25th year anniversary, which oh. is crazy because, you know, I grew up playing this, and then, you so, know, there you are scoring it. And I and I, I play Madden games, too, but uh, wh where is the room for score in there? I'm trying to... Uh, <laughs> well, it's more like... I mean, it's just... Mute. I mean, now it, uh, they, have they have more a story songs. Mode. They have and, it, yeah. yeah, it was before the story mode, but it was, you know, just the kind of the menus and the yeah, screens, yeah. you know, main theme and, and stuff like that. It wasn't, you know, it's... Uh, it, as opposed to like XCOM where I had to do, you know, 120 minutes of music or something like yeah, that. Yeah. It's not, it's not as much as that, but you know, it's, it's, it's uh, still cool to, to, to get, it's to, cool. To hit I that mean, franchise. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it was a dream. I remember when Chris, uh, he, he talked to me cause we, we were friends with uh, Steve Schnurr and whatever. He's like, dude, we, we, you know, let's do this game. You know, Steve wants us to do it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, I, you know, it like pinched me that, that we could, we could do it. So, right. like that. so yeah, I mean, I mean, that, that's the same thing that happened with a uh, command and conquer red alert. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was I was at a meeting for EA for a different project and I was walking around and I had to go to the bathroom and I came out and I'm like, wait a second, there's, there's red alert, you know, uh, artwork on the wall there. That's a cure off. You know, I'm like, wait a second, you guys doing the game? And then I, I went back in and talked to the audio lead that I was doing with. I'm like, you guys are doing, you know, Command and Conquer, Red Alert? And he's like, yeah, we're doing it. And we're looking for a composer. I'm like, no way! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I have to get on this project. So, you know, sometimes just being there at the right time, right yeah. place. And, and uh, my music, I had a lot of music that, that really worked for, for that game. So it, it was an easy hire and... and uh, 
um, I'm thankful. I mean, it's just funny how some uh, yeah. just happens. Like, I mean, oh, <laughs> that I drank a lot of water and I had to go to the bathroom. Then saw the artwork. You and, having and to pee got you the job. <laughs> I had to pee, got me a job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, Command and Conquer, Dungeon Siege Three, XCOM Two. I mean, yeah. Warhawk. All these amazing games that you've been part of. And, yeah. No, yeah. I'm very, I'm very lucky, yeah. and I, I love working with games. Um, I love the stories that you, they are being told. They're, you know, usually very epic and very. You know, I mean, nowadays, Marvel-esque, and, and uh, it's hard. There's only so many composers that will do, like, say, a Star Wars or this or that. Right. So yeah. there's not as many of those epic stories, you know, that are being told, or, you know, maybe three or four composers. You know, you've got, uh, you know, Marvel and things like that to do. So the, the games are one way to have that sort of outlet, to have that epic story to be told and be able to write for, you know, these huge orchestras and these huge stories and, um, thing so I, I love working with video games and 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 the people I have not want, worked with one guy or gal that isn't the best person to deal with. I mean, it's so easy. There isn't as much pressure. There's more time to kind of yeah. deal with it. It's it's been it's really been a dream. You know, there's just it's just been fantastic to work for. So. Would you say there's less ego going around in video games than movies, or like in terms yeah, of? Like- it can be. I I, I think so. Um, I mean, ego. I hate. I hate to say that word, but yes. I mean, I think. I think a lot of the people that I work with. Um, I, I mean, we're just work. We're just hard working. We want to tell a good story. We, we want yeah. to make the best game as possible. There's not maybe uh, as many politics. I would say that we're. If you're working on a film, that um, you know, you've got the director, you've got the producer, you know, you've got the studio, you've got. Sometimes there's a lot of cooks in that kitchen, mm-hmm. and it can be kind of a committee to kind of get something approved where. Video games is usually a much smaller scale, and the audio director or audio lead, you know, has pretty much full say. Right. At least my projects, you know, and it's probably not true for every project, but yeah. the, um, once they, you know, sort of approve the theme and stuff, it's pretty smooth sailing, and and you're just able to just, you know, one of my first games was uh, uh the Marvel the Punisher. Oh yeah 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 yeah, and so that was um. That was that was great. You know, we turned on our first demos, and you know, the clock was kind of ticking on this project. You know, because as as happens in films, audio is the last thing that sometimes gets taken. You know, uh, looked at, and like, oh my god, we need music for this game. And it's like, <laughs> oh, you know, crazy. Uh, so we kind of got hired. Uh, uh, I think within like two months of the deadline, but wow. you know, started sending you know the demos in, and the, the only note was, keep going. This is awesome. I'm like, you know, so I'm like, this is how working on games is. This is amazing. So, you know, when you get that sort of feedback that you're doing a great job and they're just, they're not holding you back and like, hey, you know, just keep going. You're doing amazing. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I really enjoyed what we did, you know. Right, and, right. And uh, it turned out really, it turned out really good. And, and uh, you know, we're happy with, you know, how it was. So it was, it was pretty nice. The orchestra was great. We did it in Prague. So it was a, you know, really, you know, fun. It was a nice way to kind of step right into video games and start doing a triple A title. So yeah. again, a knock on wood, I've been, I've been lucky with that sort of aspect as well. I, yeah. I haven't done any mobile gaming and, and, and that. So I haven't had to start like on the lower levels and, and things like that. But not that that's a bad thing. It's a good yeah. thing. It's a good thing to kind of cut your teeth on. I mean, mobile gaming is exploding right it's now. It's exploding. Yeah. I mean, there's so, I mean, it's really, now a lot of the games that I work on get ported to mo- mobile, but I haven't ever... You know, from right. the, from the get go, like started the ground up, yeah, yeah, the ground up like that. But I, I know my music is on mobile mobile gaming, but just I haven't just done a mobile game yet. But right. it, hey, I, I'm still young. I, yeah. I, I you know, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, jumping out of games, you yeah. um, have a fantastic show on Disney XD Mech X4. Yeah. Um, which is uh, how many seasons? It did yeah. three seasons. Three yeah. seasons. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, talk about uh, scoring a TV series like that and. Um, working with uh, your showrunners and the directors, which of course leads to freaks because you're right. continuing that collaboration. Right. Um, but um, what's the, I guess, what's the goal to find the sound of a series at the start and how does that sound evolve, I guess, as the series continues? Um, well, that one's actually pretty funny in the sense that I was, I don't remember the project I was working on, but I was super slammed. And we got word that, uh, that Disney was looking for a composer. And they had talked to, uh, Chris had heard about it, and Chris said, hey, do you want me to set up the interview? And I said, I, Chris, I'm too busy, I can't write a demo. I can't do it. And and I'm like, that's really dumb, because I've, I've been wanting to work for Disney for a long time, but I'm just, I, I just can't humanly yeah. fit it in. So I said no. And then um, 
my agent heard about it at, at the same time and then he sent in my demo and they loved my music and they said you'll be perfect for it and i said well i'm going on a trip i don't remember what trip it was but so i can do it in three weeks and and so they said yes which i'm surprised because i'm like normally like yes when do you need it by and i said well i can't do it until yeah and so i did the demo and it was you know they really loved what i did and you know i, I got hired for it and it you know turns out to be a great project going back to your uh, question about evolving the music i mean it, it really um it was pretty self-aware what we needed to do because it was um you know it was a you know family sort of right. obviously disney yeah uh and it was orchestral and big so it, it it had a lot of like similarity to, to my video game writing okay um so the simpsons i thought had that sort of same sort of music that i was doing um so it it didn't really evolve too much because i nail the sound right and so they keep quickly going. right and um and it's hard because at disney shows the it's in your contract that the first four or six episodes um you know we were talking earlier about you know getting stuff approved or not mm -hmm. well the first four or six six episodes disney has the final say so i'm like oh my god this is going to be hard because yeah. here here's the committee going to come in and you know kind of like you know put a stamp on it right. and I'm, you know it, it, and i was really uh, you know gearing up for it and i left myself a ton of time <laughs> between the episodes to, to make it work and um i the only note i got was you know great keep going i love i love hearing the score for this i'm not you know i got a couple small little notes you yeah know, it's not it's not that like the only thing i write is gold because that <laughs> yeah. is not what i'm trying to explain <laughs> that is not true but for, but but i was able to kind of capture the sound i mean i've always love stories about robots and like children and growing up you know we talked about you know how i started my career but i remember like we're talking about music and and and, and i didn't mention this but but like godzilla movies was i mean love the music that ba -na -na -na, you yeah. know that sort of th <laughs> that you know trombones is blasting away right. down there and it just uh, so i always had that like like love of that sort of stories and things like that so right. you know this this uh you know robot and monster of the week yeah. kind of thing for me was like it was like my wheelhouse it was yeah. exactly it was like i was born for this score and then then um and the people to work with that uh, disney was great to work with um and the production company was amazing to work with so it was i mean for me I mean, I, I can't wait till I do another project with him. That's sure. awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was very, I was very <laughs> fortunate. Very fortunate. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. And then, of course, you continued collaboration with director Zach uh, Lipovsky and Adam Stein on Freaks. Right. So, uh, talk about when they approached you. They, I guess they came to you, of course, for the music. And yeah. what were those first conversations about? Like, what did they want musically? What were your like kind of yeah. ideas that you were pitching in those first talks? Yeah. Well, the the funny thing is, I I you know I had I knew Zach really well because he was the showrunner as well. Yeah. And Adam was doing directing for it, so I didn't have as much contact with Adam. Mm -hmm. But I was talking to them at a rap party that thankfully I got invited to. Composers never get invited <laughs> to those things, but they I got invited to this one. And, you know, we just started talking small talk. Hey, what's next? What do you guys do in the summer? We had a little bit of break be before the third season and they'd mentioned freaks. Yeah. And I said, I would, you know, they told me about the story and I said, this would be fantastic. I'd love to do it. And they go, well, we'd love to hire you. So, uh, you know, maybe we can figure out something, you know, going on. They sent me the script. Um, I loved it. I really, you know, could see the music or, you know, in my head and hear what I wanted to do for it. Um, and it just kind of evolved from that. And, uh, you know, I knew, I knew Zach and Adam were, you know, they're, they're just about to really take off. And, you know, these, these two guys were yeah. really talented visionaries and I just, you know, want, I want to work with them as much as I can because these guys are great and they're really easy to work with. And that, that, is, that makes my job so much more simple to when you can collaborate with, you know, directors and producers on a level like Zach and Adam yeah. and I can collaborate with and, and it it makes for the whole process to be a lot, you know, more simple and streamlined and, and you can just get a great product and, and, and you know, and, and make a great, you know, film together. Yeah. So you, you talked about reading that script first. When you read a script, are you, is your mind already jumping to, oh, I can do this, I can, yeah, are yeah. you already coming up with ideas? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, the focus on Freaks is on Chloe who's played uh, by Lexi Kolker, who was seven years old at the time. So 
total child actress, yeah. and she pulls off an amazing performance. Um, and when you read the you know the script, you're you're thinking, oh, this is going to be great. But then when you see it finally on uh, uh, on film on the TV screen, you're just like, wow, that's just unreal. So I was blown away by that. Uh, but going back to my ideas when I'm looking at it, was you you, you see certain scenes and and there's you know an ice cream truck that's that's part of the plot in freaks and so i knew that i was going to have to do some ice cream truck music and how that was going to blend into the score you know so you were thinking about like i mean i always put like a little pin on the main characters of mm. like okay well there's chloe so chloe's theme is going to be very important because it's filmed from her perspective so right. that was maybe one of the first things i started working on was her theme and then you know there was other themes for uh, the uh, the rest of the cast that I started looking at. So um, after before they started, I started actually writing before they started filming, and that was a, one of the first times I think I've I've, I've got the uh, chance to do that. Um, so I wrote a bunch of themes, and I wrote maybe ten minutes of music, you know, kind of a, a suite, mm. of, a, a freaks suite sort of thing, and. And so they would play it on set and to get the, oh, the wow. actors kind of in the mood and That's things amazing. like that. It, it was nice. I mean, you know, uh, it was just a nice project, you know. Dude, I love hearing that because I just interviewed uh, Hildur uh, Gudna Doter who did Joker. Yeah, yeah. And she had the same experience where they took her suite and themes and they played it on set yeah. and actually fed it into Joaquin Phoenix's ear for his performance. And I just love hearing that. Yeah. That, because that goes back to my favorite director, Leone, of course, yeah. playing Morricone's music on set. Yeah. So I love hearing that. That's awesome. No, it, it, it's good. I mean, I, th I think that if you can get the composer in early, um, the people that get music and understand what what we do yeah. and, and the emotion that we can help, you know, portray on the screen, it, it's, it's, it's really a good way to go. And, and and a movie like Freaks, I mean, I don't know for every film that it would, you know, like, yeah, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, some of those comedies, I don't know if it would help to have my, you know, comedic <laughs> scores that are thrown in there. But, right. Um, but on this, it was, it was really handy to have. And, and I mean, it didn't change at all. I mean, I, I thought, I thought, oh yeah, I'll write a bunch of music and, 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 when, and then once we get into the film, change. it's going to be totally different. Yeah. But it, it didn't. It didn't. So they just kind of did that and just kind of molded it to the picture and kind of you know fleshed it out for us. Yeah, yeah you did. I mean, uh, I think I think one of the more interesting or not more interesting, but the, I kept on writing these huge long themes and you know like the stuff and and the opening of the film doesn't. I was like, oh, I'm going to make this huge main <laughs> theme and this and that and it's going to be awesome and whatever. But it didn't work out that way. It really kind of started not a cold open, but mm. where it kind of starts with ice cream truck music and then it kind of you know kind of gets in, gets into the film that way. Yeah. And I kept on thinking, oh no, I want to write like this awesome you know Jerry Goldsmith you know main <laughs> you know titles theme and you know do all sorts of stuff like that. But it, it didn't end that way. So. So some I had to kind of you know fit my music to to hit the film, which oh that's such a terrible thing to do, but uh, um, but in the, in the end titles I was able to kind of like do all yeah. right here's what I really wanted <laughs> to do I couldn't fit it all in the movie because of you know because of film and right. dialogue and I even got a, a a little email from the director after the score came out for Freaks. Um, and he's like, wow, your music was amazing. I, you know, with all that dialogue in the way, I couldn't tell, you know, whatever. <laughs> that pesky dialogue, I'm like, yep, you know, it, it, it does get in the way. But, I mean, as a composer, you are serving the film. That right. is your most important job. Yeah. You want to be as creative uh, musically as you can. But in the end, the, the film has to take precedence. So that's, um, that's always, you know first focus in your mind yeah of course yeah um was there anything that was uh, particularly challenging that that was like a tough thing to crack that it was like took you maybe a little bit longer yeah well i kept on writing chloe's theme mm -hmm. over and over and over i wrote it just the way it ended up pretty early in the process but the tricky part of it was that it had to start off really childlike and really simple but then it had to kind of evolve into this I didn't really not more complicated, but it had the melody had to be able to be played over a uh, large orchestra, uh, scary scenes, all these different scenes. So finding that right, right melody that hit all those, you know, uh, sort of emotions was was tricky. I mean, I had it right at the very beginning, but yeah. I did as a composer's will. I was second guessing. Oh, is this and that? And, and a lot of the themes that I wrote ended up being used for other parts of it and um uh so that kind of worked out so there was like chloe seam a b c d and e sort of thing <laughs> and they ended up being used and luckily they ended up used for other parts of the film so 
but I, I know if I actually look back on it, I probably have like a lot of themes just sitting on the shelf that I, that someday if, if, you know, recycle it, but I, I, I think as a composer, and I've said this for a lot of games and a lot of projects I've worked on where I've like, Oh my God, I just wrote seven or eight amazing themes. One is going to be used, right? right? I'll go back and, and I'll, you know, I can't wait to use, you know, B, C, D and E themes, but I never do it. Um, because I always feel like it's easier. I'm always going to write my next best thing. Yeah. Tomorrow is my best day as a composer. Not right. not yesterday. <laughs> and I didn't know anything yesterday. Today is the best day as a composer. That's but tomorrow. True. The, so I'm always looking forward. It's always you know you're always looking for the the new thing. And what I wrote five years ago for a theme. It, it's it, I know there's only twelve notes, and I know there's only eighty eight keys and whatever. But it's it's amazing how small changes. Yeah, or just having something in front of you will completely shift your mind to be like that. None of those would ever work for whatever so, you're working on. It's amazing, you know, because you, you talked about how, you know, looking at it on the script. And I've done that a lot where yeah. there's been a script or there's been an atomatic or something about it. But when you see the actual film, it always changes your mind. Freaks, I will say, I, I kind of hit the, the, the note early on. Yeah. And maybe it was because I had a pretty awesome relationship with Zach and Adam already. Um, I don't know. Something about it just really felt right to me. Mm -hmm. But I, there's, you know, as composers do, you know, we have, we have to demo sometimes. And I can't tell you how many times that I've demoed something, and I'm like, wow, this was great. And then I don't know why I didn't get this project. And then you see it finally on the film. You're like, oh, <laughs> that's what it should be. Yeah. Oh, I would have done. That's exactly what I I didn't. You just didn't conceptualize what what that was. Yeah. You know, supposed to sound like and what that was going to look like. So. Yeah, I mean, just give me any film whatsoever. Give me any visuals. I'm a very visual creature. As I said, you know, Davy C being my favorite, you know, uh, composer. Uh, Van Gogh is one of my favorite artists. Mm. You know, it's just, I love, you know, seeing that sort of anything on the screen to kind of get my mind working. Yeah, it's funny. It's just, I love how that works because, like, for me, I'm not a composer, but, like, in terms of what sparks visuals is music. And then yeah. for composers, it's the visuals that will spark music. So your music will spark visuals into like a visual person. And then you have yeah. to see the visuals to translate that into music. I love that kind of flow. Yeah. That, kind of like just like that cycle that goes <laughs> around and around I mean, and around. Well, that's what, I mean, we're all in one way or another, we're all telling a story. Yeah. And we're all, we're, we are all artists. And so there's d uh, different ways that really stimulate your brain and get going. And so anything that you can look for to, you know, to kind of, to figure out the way to, the best way to do it is great. I mean, I mean, I, I, there's music sometimes does it for me as well, but, but visually when it comes to film it yeah. is, it is really, you know, the thing that sets me off. Well, it's a, it's a beautiful score. I've been listening yeah. to it since it came out. I was listening to it on the way down here. Oh, you yeah. know, it's a, uh, uh, I even sense, I know it's not like a Gothic score, but I sense Gothic little touches. I don't know. It just, yeah. it's, and it's so emotional too. There's a nice, you know, kind of deep emotional current under there. Yeah, so thank I, you. I, I thank really you. love what you did. <laughs> thank you. No, I, I appreciate that. And, yeah. And, I mean, I think that's um, one of the most important things. What I always try to focus on the most. I know it's a you know we we talk about like composers are, and music is is about emotion, but um, but it really is. And yeah. And when I do, you know, we talked about video game scores, and I'm always stressing emotion and story. There's gonna be stuff that blows up. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be action. There's gotta be fighting for the most part in movies or some sort of thing like that. But where the music it does the best is the, getting that emotional current throughout the whole film yeah. or video game project. Like uh, was it what Last of Us? Oh, with that score. I mean, Gustavo. That, oh yeah, that was amazing. And and that's that's what music can do, and that's yeah. the power that that really we hold in our pocket that i think that 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 really gets people going on yeah. games is that emotional content it's like yeah the blowing up yeah the whatever but but where i can really shine is is the emotion so thank you i that it's music doesn't always get you know when i i you know of course i read a lot of reviews and and thankfully there's been a lot of great freaks reviews oftentimes they don't talk about the music that's just the way it works. Right. And that's fine. And that usually is a win for composers because when they, if they mention it, usually it means they didn't like it. Right. Um, so I was reading one review and they had just talked about how the film's emotion was spot on and amazing and things like that. And for me, I raised my hand. I'm like, that's my review right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It doesn't say Tim Wynn 
and the music was so great and so emotional, but they don't, they don't understand uh, yeah. what's, what's happening behind. And that's what I am giving to the film is that emotion and that heart and that spirit. And, and so um, for me, that was a win. I mean, it's not yeah. something I'm going to post on my website, maybe <laughs> exactly, but it is, it, is, it is something I think that yeah, that's a win for the composer. Absolutely. So. Well, I mean, congrats on Freaks. Um, it's fantastic. It's going to get great, great reviews and everything. Yeah. Um, but kind of pulling back a little bit and looking as we kind of wind down, looking more like a general approach. And we talked about you looking at the script and everything. I always like to ask composers, though, though, and I know it's going to be different. But um, we talked about a little bit about your where you kind of go for inspiration, your visual person. But where does the first note come from? Is that like where do you typically? If usually composers come at the last second and just yeah. have to like, you know, you're given a, a first cut or a lock cut or whatever, and you have to work off that. But yeah. where do you jump to to get that first? Do you just like to talk to the, to the filmmakers? Do you just like to sit and watch that first cut? Do you just like to noodle on the piano? Like, what? Where do you kind of get that first? Well, note. <laughs> yeah, the first note. Um, well. I, I think, I mean, yes, you have to noodle on the piano mm -hmm. a little bit, uh, and I and I prefer to noodle on a live piano. Mm -hmm. So doing it on the synths, I think, isn't um, as hey, uh, big, beautiful. Piano yeah, right yeah, here. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's felt right. Here. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> but uh, so uh, so there's something about an acoustic piano that really uh, brings out something different and visceral that you can't get out of out of the soft soft synths. Um, I do do that, but I will say that I like when I'm away from the pianos when I do my best writing, mm. and um, it, it could be on the car ride into the studio, it can be in the shower, mm. it could be anywhere, maybe not in front of the not keyboard. Here, yeah. um, I like to say that if you're sitting in front of the keyboard and and a film is different, TV shows you're like, okay, I've got to write five minutes of music today and go. So you sometimes got to go and you get writer's block and you got to keep going. Yeah. Um, so first you don't, if you do have writer's block here, I'm going off on another tangent. Sorry. <laughs> no, this, go. Sorry for this listener. Tangent uh, down. Tangent away. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that you, um, it's easier to edit something than it is to start from scratch. So don't sit there and go, Oh my God, I, I don't have mm -hmm. an idea going on my head. Uh, so I'm just going to sit here and wait for the inspiration. Well, you can't always do that. And so if you're doing a TV score or something that you have to get minutes out right away, you're just going to have to write it and you're going to have to write garbage sometimes. But you can come back, take your dog for a walk. And that's another place I think that I find inspiration. It's just being away from the keyboard, being in silence. Mm -hmm. And the second that I start working on a film and I am working nonstop on that film 24 hours a day, even if I'm sleeping, because I wake up and I think about it. I think about it in my dreams. I think about it at all points. I'm thinking about the script. I'm thinking about how I can be creative on this project. What can I do differently from the last project? What other notes can I do? What, you know, you're always thinking, you're like, oh God, there's gotta be more than 12 notes. You know, <laughs> uh, you know how, can I, how can I, you know, ring it out? So I always find that, I'm, that away from the keyboard is where I do the bulk of it yeah. and I'll sing into my phone a lot and then come up with the ideas and then, and then I kind of craft them um, in front mm. of the computer and stuff like that. But that's, I mean, I generally away from, away from is when I get my inspiration. Isn't it crazy though how it's almost like a disease that just plagues your mind and it's like it never leaves until the project is done. Well, right? you, you, have, you, have, you have hit the nail on the head with that, <laughs> the disease, you know. I, I do often call what my... Uh, music ability is a sickness um, because <laughs> I can't watch a film without thinking about music. Mm -hmm. I can't, I really can't do anything without thinking about music in, in a lot of ways. Um, and, 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 and in what you said, it's hundred percent true until you're done with that project. Uh, I think I finally had the score released. What was it? Two weeks ago. Yeah. So I was, you know, fiddling around with the album right up until the last minute until I could <laughs> And until that, like, I shipped it off to get mastering, I was like, oh, you know, done. I can, like, I, that part of my, yeah. like, my blood pressure probably dropped 15 <laughs> points because you are, uh, I think the only reason why people ever, or at least, I, I shouldn't say people, but composers that I've talked to, that the only reason why you finish something is you have to. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, I can't tell you the albums that I was writing back in my 20s, early 20s that. I haven't finished those because I've been too busy to, to finish it or I didn't have the heart to finish it or, or whatever it was. But like, I think that's really 
when you're you, you know you're getting paid to do it and there's a deadline yeah that's when composers you know uh you know really get it get going on it and i and i think sometimes that you know the perspiration inspiration mm. has has a lot to do with it and if yeah. you have to get it done then, then you do but uh you know i think and it was i th i think also i remember my first uh when you're talking about inspiration it was the first project that i was doing for concord new horizons and i had to write this one i had to write a song for this one scene and uh, I couldn't get it right. Couldn't get it right. Weeks and weeks. The director was going to Philippines to shoot his next film and just couldn't get it right. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to fail. It's my first project. You know, what am I going to do? Well, I woke up at five o'clock in the morning to take my dad to LAX. On the way back from LAX, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And wow. I sang the song. I went home and wrote it all in like five minutes. Wow. And it like the director's like yes that's the you know you're the greatest or whatever you know whatever they yeah. ended up saying sort of thing like that but that's really where you know the inspiration can come so um so everybody drive your parents to lax at five o'clock in the morning and, and you'll figure back. it out <laughs> <laughs> well tim i want to thank you so much for your time today uh it's been such a pleasure to pick your brain and 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 discuss your work and discuss everything and it's always such a pleasure so thanks guy i really appreciate it yeah, thanks